what happened yesterday is before the whole Damian Lillard to the Milwaukee Bucks announcement, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, I believe, were at plus 850. I think they were somewhere in like fifth or sixth uh, highest uh, possibility of winning a championship, and they rocketed it up immediately to, I believe, it's plus 350. They're now ahead of the Celtics and the Nuggets. Um, when you take a look, Dan, at how the whole East shifted, and the power and, and, yep. and w- with Miami not getting them. And a lot of people, I think, had money on Miami thinking they were getting them. Yep. Where do you think the smart bet is at for winning the East this year? I wouldn't bet anything right now. Not a thing. I, I think Milwaukee's in serious trouble. I mean, it's a great move. I love the trade, but they have absolutely no depth. They're, they're in trouble in the playoffs. The biggest problem for them, if you look whenever they face Miami, is whenever Giannis is off the court, they can't do anything. So they acquire Lillard, and that's great because now you can split them up a little bit. But now you have no one to play with him. I mean, Grayson Allen was a huge bench piece for them. Mm. Regardless of how you feel about Grayson Allen, they have no depth, none. So they're going to have to go. Chris Middleton, when healthy, is obviously. Sure, and and Middleton's a a borderline all-star. He's a good player. He kills the Celtics. But again, it's the same type of thing. They lose a lot of defense for J. Rue Holidays, maybe the best defensive guard in the entire, you know, entire. You're the only one I've ever heard pronounced it J. Rue, by the way. Yeah, it's J. Rue Holiday. It's it's not that. I, that's, that's I've called him since, like, day one. Liv Shetz was there when he was born. Yes, yeah, that was there when <laughs> he was born. Him. He's, he's he older cut his cord, maybe. actually, fun fact. What? You cut his cord, fun fact. Yes, yeah, I've called his cord. Well, he knows uh, the guy who cut the cord. Pat his mama, yeah. Uh, no, th- look, so the, them losing Holiday is going to be massive. I, I Why I, is Grayson Allen a uh, a big loss? Because, Fred, they don't have anyone. Look who, look who they ended their bench. He they're ended their season playing, for them, though. <laughs> they're, they're, they're playing undrafted free agents. Like, yeah, but they Grayson just, Allen wasn't playing very well. Yes, I mean, he, he's, no. a, he's an important player. I, I mean, I, no, but his, statistically, he's not a good player. But when you say, like, statistically, you're talking about, remember, these guys are playing, like, 15 minutes on, you know, in a, an important playoff game, maybe those 15 minutes are where things swing. I mean, look at what happened in Philadelphia. So whenever you're saying, the Sixers you're took saying beat off the floor. I mean, that, the that's addition of Lillard is offset by losing Grayson Allen. You did say that. No, I said that they don't have any depth. I said that they're, no, no, they're but, in trouble but, with depth. But by adding, by adding Damian Lillard, they've lost depth. You mentioned Grayson Allen. Yep. So, so the acquisition of Lillard does not trump the loss of Allen. They they end up as a net neutral after that. No, I think I think they're definitely positive. But again, the problem is that they they're gonna have the same problems they had moving forward. They don't have the depth to compete with the Boston's, who are far deeper than them. With Miami, who is far deeper than them. I you mean, that Boston's deeper than Milwaukee right now. Far deeper. It's not even close. Okay, let me just far r- r- real quick, Dan. Let me just so, let's go eight nine deep. Milwaukee's maybe right, five or six. All right, Dan. Let me let me just because we all know that in the playoffs the bench is shortened. I'm just gonna read you right now what the Bucks roster looks like, just the top sure. eight guys. Damian Lillard, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, Malik Beasley, Pat Connaughton, and Jay Crowder. That doesn't suck. Jay, that Crow- doesn't Jay suck Crowder has not been... I mean, Jay yeah. Crowder wasn't useful last year, guys. But Grayson, remember that Grayson Allen eighth. also gets them into foul trouble at times because he's a dirty player. And well, they put, 10 points. But they put their season on him their last game, and he missed that shot, and it wasn't even... A close miss. Sure, and that's fine, but we're not going to kill a player over one shot in one game. Like that's, No, I'm that's... not, but what I'm saying is he's a dirty player and he does get them in trouble sometimes. Get him off of my team. Well, I mean, that's fine. You can feel that way, but the regardless is that you still need players to fill his role, and right now they don't have him. Uh, I mean, if you don't you're think counting they can on find Malik someone... Beasley and Jay Crowder, guys, who have not Jay been... Crowder could not finish 123rd in the league in scoring and 120th in assists. That's impossible for him. I mean, Jay Crowder hasn't been good in years. They were he got way. I would I would say that uh, that uh, Grayson Allen has never been good. I, I mean, I, Fra- I mean, Fred. I, th- I think you're being a little bit disingenuous about this. Like they, I'm not Luke, being Luke, disingenuous Luke, at Milwaukee, all. Giving... Milwaukee doesn't have depth. That has always been their problem. That's why they lost last year when Giannis got hurt. They yeah. no, no one, no, no So they're better no, than last Milwaukee's year. Milwaukee's problem is lack of three point shooting. No, their problem has always been depth. That's why they struggle against Miami. Whenever they take a star player off the floor, they cannot score. That has been the calling card for Milwaukee's issues. That's why they've gone into the buyout market. They try to trade for second round picks. They've done. Every 
everything they can to get depth, and they cannot find okay, guys so, who can fill those so, roles. So I understand, Dan, why you think people should wait and don't put any money on the futures right now because this is going to be an interesting week, especially with Drew Holiday. I'm sorry, J. Rue Holiday <laughs> uh, being someone who, within the next couple of days, most likely will end up getting traded. The Celtics are reportedly— They're not getting uh, I know, but they're calling— <laughs> Um, what do you think this means for the Celtics' chances in all of this? I mean, I, I don't think the Celtics did any better. I think it's kind of a wash. I mean, it, it's not Miami, so I think that's, I guess, a good thing, but it's also your next best competitor who, again, I think they got better. I just think now they're going to have to go and they're going to have to get in, improve in different areas again. So, And, again, Milwaukee being aggressive the way they are, they have basically no assets left, can, you know, considering they used all those flips for, for Holiday in the first place. They'll probably find out and find a way to go get players at the deadline. So I, I'm assuming that, you know, in, in that case, it really doesn't matter. I think it's a wash for the Celtics. Like, I don't think that, it, you know, they're, they're you know, I, Milwaukee or Miami, it doesn't really matter who got them. The fact is that either of those two well, teams gives Boston you a, don't, a Don't forget Miami could wind up with Holiday. Which would, which would increase their chances that, a ton. I'd find that extremely unlikely because and Milwaukee has a new head coach. Well, yeah, but remember, right now, John, the I mean, Miami had a better trade offer than what than what uh, Milwaukee gave to Portland. What Portland got was horrendous. I think that they are you kidding me? You think what Miami was offering was better than what? Uh, I, mean, I mean, even Damian Lillard's cousin basically said on there it had nothing to do with the trade offer. Miami had a significantly better trade offer. This was all about. The front office not what was the, the trade that. offer? Well, okay, so Miami. Miami's trade offer was two first round picks and Tyler Harrow. From no, the last thing I no, heard, that was not that's not correct. It was two first round picks, two pick swaps, Tyler Harrow, a combination of Jovic, who was very good last year for them, the young player they got, uh, com- or or Jamie or Jaime Hawkins, the kid from UCLA who balled out in summer league, and also Kyle Lowry, who's an expiring contract. So why did they not make that deal then, if that was the trade? Because again, and a lot of people in the NBA are talking about this. Uh, Again, because of the fact that Portland was very upset about the fact that Miami basically inserted themselves in and basically, you know, leveraged Damian Lillard's agent, it was an emotional decision instead of a strategic decision. And that's why a lot of people, I mean, dude, if you guys look at DeAndre Ayton last year, he got run off the floor of the Nuggets series. He's not a usable asset. He's so bad that basically no one wanted him. I would actually say that he's a net negative in that deal. The Phoenix Suns are the big winners yesterday. Who is, not who Milwaukee is, Bucks, who not is, anyone else. Who is reporting that the the Miami made that offer? I I mean that's that's been the offer out there for forever. Because I have not I haven't. But then I've again, not I'm, heard. I'm not the I'm not connected with the deep pools. Was in two first round picks. No, and two, and two pick swaps. That was the original, and then one young player because they didn't want to give up both Jovic and Hawkes. And if they were going to give up more first round picks, they didn't want to give up either. Because that if you're the, if you're Portland, you not only got those two first round picks, but you might get two more by getting rid of Drew Holiday. Well, sure, but your problem. But again, he's an expiring contract. He's however many years old, thirty three years old. So you get two first round picks. They're probably going to be mid tier first round picks at best. You're not going to get anything significant. So would you rather have a pick swap with Miami when your player is what your best players are what 36, 37, or would you rather have potentially two late first in, you know, the NBA, new NBA setup where late second round or early second round picks are now worth more than late first round picks? I well, like no, that. Cause they, they have the picks later when they believe that Milwaukee's not going to be as good. Right. But Miami offer the same picks. It would have been the same picks, including one more, and the same pick swaps. So that wouldn't matter. And again, Lillard will be in by twenty twenty eight. What thirty? I think he's thirty three right now. So yes. it'll be okay. So he'll be thirty eight, and Jimmy well, yeah, Butler would have been thirty nine. I mean, you're not competing with a thirty eight year old Damian Lillard and a thirty nine year old Jimmy Butler. So saying that Miami's picks would have been worse than Milwaukee's are silly, especially when Giannis is twenty eight years old, and in five years he'll be thirty three. So do we think Giannis is going to completely fall off a cliff in five years? I don't. So, again, I think it's just an emotional decision that Portland made, which is exactly what Lillard's cousin said yesterday. Nothing to do with the trade offer. It's an emotional decision they made because they didn't want to send Lillard to where he wanted to go because they were upset that he requested out. All right, we'll be back. Dan will tell us what more information that he has that no one else knows. That is all It's the dark up. pool, man. It's the I dark know. pool. This isn't he, like anything that no one knows, Fred. It might just well, be something I, I, you I, don't I, know, I, but I, it's something I, that everyone, I, everyone I, else I, knows. Fred, Fred was ending the, the break nicely. 
There you go. I was. I mean, I'm saying, Dan, you know things that literally no one else knows. <laughs> literally, everyone, I, literally everyone. Literally It's called a ramp out, Dan. Saying, yes. It's called a ramp out. Let's, let's right, let, let Fred take it to the commercial. Dan, Dan can't allow that. <laughs> Dan, no, can't allow that. 100%. He's right. That would break the echo chamber. Agreed. <laughs> All right. Very good. We'll be back in just a moment.